these dudes wiped out the competition by repurposing an existing product and creating a fun and relatable brand that is now worth more than $50 million. This, this is Dude, Dude Wipes. Wipes. Let's, Let's go. go. What's up, everyone? Sean Azar here. I'm with Matt Skopak. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Deep Dive, episode 55, where we dive into businesses like Dude Wipes and dive into their marketing and business strategies such that you can take these tactics and implement them into your business. Dude Wipes started in 2011 by four entrepreneurs, mainly by Sean, I believe, Riley, right? Sean Riley. You know, he found there was a, an opening in a market. Well, while he was sitting on the toilet, wiping his ass, He's like, why are we wiping our ass like cavemen? Yeah. Like we're using toilet paper, which feels like sandpaper, and basically wiping and cleaning up. Yeah. And when he was at, I believe, at Costco or at one of these uh, retailers, he's like, I'm going to use baby wipes or something like that, yeah. right? So they started using baby wipes in the apartment with, with four college dudes. And they basically started making fun of it, and they came up with this yeah, crazy like, idea. We, we should create a product that you could wipe your ass with these and call it something. We're like, well, dude, you're right. We should call it dudes, dude wipes, right? Yep. Something like that, that type of story, um, which is hilarious. Uh, again, I think they were in a dorm, right? In Chicago? A uh, dorm or apartment and That's in Chicago, That's yep. where they started their business. And I think the first few years, um, and by the way, this brand got into Shark Tank. Uh, I believe their timeline was about- 2015. 2015, so about four, what, four or five years, four about years. Four years afterwards. And they started small, like like a lot of businesses growing up, like starting. 2011, they started small. Their first product was actually a portable uh, men's wipe, which you brought when you weren't at home. Um, and then they evolved into having a pack, a larger pack that you kept in your bathroom, but that used aloe vera, natural fibers, and then was scented with men's fragrances. So after uh, Shark Tank, they increased to about, about 3.2 million, and they started expanding into multiple product lines. And uh, you know these guys, and I saw a couple old videos, uh, Sean Riley, uh, the main guy, um, doing these presentations, great speaker. He knew how to present something and really understand like, you know, this is a solution. It's hilarious, it's, it's a great solution. And that's how we're gonna get to some of our points here, like how they leverage the product, right? Related to an audience, and then created a market for it. Yep, so, exactly. You wanna do number one? Uh, sure. Yep. Uh, 80% of the results will come from 20% of the action. And us, if you're in business or if you ever heard this, it's known as the 80 20 rule, or it's known as uh, Pareto principle. And this was a scientist from early 1900s, eight, uh, 1900s, early 1800s, somewhere in that range. And he noticed that he was planting, gardening, and he noticed that pea plants and the pea pods that were the part that you eat, all the pea pods were coming from 20% of the plants. And he thought, and they came up with this concept, he thought with real estate that 80% of the land was really owned by 20% of individuals. And he came up with this concept, which is known very well in business, is that basically 80% of all your revenue comes from about 20% of action or customers. And this is something very important, which I think Dude Wipes also really realized, and Mark Cuban even said to them, is basically don't do too much and focus on one product. And this is something that they did very well um, that I think Sean is gonna talk to you about more. It's really, as an entrepreneur, what we do is we think we can do everything great. We can create any like type of product and make it work within the ecosystem. But really what good entrepreneurs do and what you should do as your business is come up with one really simple, great idea and expand and maximize the reach of that idea so that you can really make it work and take uh, as much of a, a brand market share as possible. So you kind of stole my second point. No, but I, I, really, led, I led into yeah, it. So at, to go into number two is sometimes all you need is just one product, especially to start. Sometimes like I'm in the business and this is where I learned from multiple brands is like, tons of SKUs, keep adding, and just sell, sell, sell. You know, I've learned that with uh, Safavia, which is a home decor company, where they're, they're like a massive company, private company. But what I'm seeing is, especially when you're a startup, all you need is that one product. Yeah. That, that one product that could provide a solution and create a market around it, and you're building that attention span, that's all you need, especially when you're building something new, you're holding inventory. Because you don't wanna hold so much inventory that there's no market for it. So they focus on something that, Again, the existing product is here, baby wipes. The baby wipes 
where you know you sit on the on the you know your what is it the, the bathroom counter yep. like behind you when you're taking out know, a good deuce you know you take the wipe 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 away but what if you're on a date what if you're on a, a basketball game and or your restaurant wherever you need one of those wipes you're not gonna take one of those big packets and you can't take one and put it in your pocket it's gonna dry out so they they thought you know what let's wrap it up like a condom wrapper and that's it dude wipes and actually when you actually look at this product they branded it really smart like i think on the wrapper itself they had like some social media actions like hey tweet us while you're pooping maybe you could be on our next uh branding campaign it was something like that yeah. um which i love because you know when you're you know opening it up like think about a condom wrapper st- open it up looking at it while taking a deuce and you're like oh this is hilarious whatever it is and you know tweet away so focus on that one product and then you could expand later like yeah. they did. And I yeah. think now their product line, they have a bunch of things. They have uh, Bidet. Was it Bidet? A Bidet. Bidet, which is, so you It's know, like their newest product. I think it's a gimmick. Or well, maybe it's not a gimmick, but. They have underwear. They have powders. Pow- they have talc pro- powders that you can rub and keep you scented nicely. So, um, and then they have two sizes. They still have their portable wipes. Which and now they, they have, yeah. I think the second product was the, like, you could have an encounter so yep, for your exactly. home. So they were listening to the consumers because like, oh, we need this for our home, not just like the travel size. Yep. Perfect. So there you go. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, number three, this is something that is personal, for, not personal for me, but me and Sean have talked about this, and this is good for all entrepreneurs to hear, and this is also, I heard it from Sean Riley, is there's so much stig- stigma out there that's saying like, to be an entrepreneur, you need to go all in, you need to give up everything that you have in terms of your job, your money, your time, and you need to put it all on the line to be an entrepreneur. And I think that detracts a lot of people from doing it. And I don't think that stigma is true. And I, Sean Riley talked about it, and this is why I'm bringing it up, is sometimes like to bootstrap and to make things work, you need to have another job or you have your main career. But the biggest thing is you need to have a passion project or you want to have to do more. Maybe you have a nine to five, but from 6 p.m. to midnight, you need to be working on something that you believe you're going to build. And just like Sean Riley, he's a perfect example. They started this in 2011, but he worked in construction for at least a year before he went to an incubator in Houston where he kind of gave everything up. He worked in a restaurant serving tables while also growing the brand, which he said is actually one of the reasons why he gave such a good presentation uh, to Shark Tank or why he can even give, before that even it was just give hilarious. great presentations because he learned how to communicate people and talk to customers at the restaurant. So. I hate this misnomer that you that everyone thinks you need to give up everything, time, money, just to go all in on business. It's not true. You sometimes need to bootstrap and make money so that you can keep on generating and funding that your your company until there does become a point where you do need to go all in. Hundred percent right. And there's a lot of famous entrepreneurs, you know, that talk about like Gary Vee. You're not an entrepreneur. Um, if you're not all in on it or yeah. I don't know if that's a quote like but until, that's, until you're willing to give up everything you have you can never have until you're willing, willing to give up everything you have you can never have what you dream of or that's another quote but a good pro tip on this and Matt and I were discussing earlier is try to find a job that aligns with possibly the brand that you're going to create that you could use you could leverage those skill sets you could leverage that network the tools that you're working on your daily job that you could perhaps actually while you're working your job, it's actually you're working also to build up your brand. It's simultaneously. It's not like a distraction. Yeah. It's actually helping it. It could be by like, all right, you're at his job. You're actually building up a network. Yeah. And network that's not going to be competitive. Now, I know there's a lot of these uh, uh, competitive that you're going to sign something you can't steal. NDA, like, yeah. Yeah. So that's fine. But you're building up a, uh, a clientele that these relationships that could help build up your brand. Or perhaps tools that you could leverage or skill sets that you yeah. never... I uh, knew about. I was like, all right, look, you may not, you may have to give up a job that's very like a high paying job. Maybe you have to cut back. Maybe you have to learn. Let's just say if you have to learn, you have nothing, you have no idea about packaging or logistics. Work for a logistics company. Yeah. Right. Try to understand those aspects. So you get those uh, skills necessary. You're still getting paid. Yeah. And then you could take those skill sets and bring it up to building up your business. Or e commerce company. If you want to start an e commerce brand and you don't know anything about marketing, which is basically all what it takes, join the marketing agency and and help out, be a secretary and see what they're doing and and everything like that. At least gain knowledge that's going to help you succeed in your hobby. But I do not mean this is not going to be easy because it's going to suck 
let me tell you, you're going to be working from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and then you're going to be working another five-hour shifts. Your weekends are going to be gone because you're you're trying to build something and gain knowledge. So it's not easy, but the thing idea that you have to give up your current job or give up your life or all your money to become an entrepreneur is bullshit. Like as long as you have a passion project that – you rather do when you get home than sit and watch TV or, or do whatever you need to do. That's the key. And that if I can, if I can convince someone to like start that journey after work, then you should do it. So Matt, are you trying to, you're telling people don't sleep. Just, you know, I didn't say sleep. You can sleep for five, six hours. That's all you need. Yeah. No, I mean, like, like you said, get home at six, work from your business from six to like 2 AM and then, you know, start your day from there. But that's, if you got to do it, that's the way you got to do it. Yeah. Are we want more? Four, four. Number four, create a fun reward program. Generic, we always talk about it. We're in 55 episodes, but you know what? It's funny, Matt. Like, I saw a dude, uh, dude's reward program, which is really like in your face. Um, there's a l- little pop up, but there's also when you're on their website, which by the way, go check out their website. It's such a fun branding style, large text, lots of visuals. Everything is hilarious. I even love how they're trying to get you to sign up for their email program, their SMS. They actually don't even have a multi-step uh, form, at least today, which is what, January 4th of 2022. It's different, but they- Isn't it just enter your cell phone, MS, SMS conversion? No, they actually ask you to sign up via email, but later on, not even that same journey, or at least not for me. I got different. I got an SMS. Oh, you did? Yeah. I got the, the new thing that all brands do is they want to capture your cell phone. So they, I got the SMS where they'll- Put in your number, they'll send you a text and you get the promo code through your phone. Oh, you know why? I got it. No, no, I know why. Why? Because I entered your email yesterday. That's why. Or the other day. Okay, that's why. They already had your email. He always does this. He <laughs> enters my email on every single brand we do. You should see my inbox. I get blasted by 55 different companies. Yeah. It, it, that's actually great. So yeah, I, I, I mean, entered, it's good his, to see the I entered his email. So they had that. your email and they probably do to, you know, how it's connected and everything. They just asked you for, for your phone number. Yeah. That was the next step. That was the next step. Uh, going back to the reward program. Now the reward pro- program is really easy to understand. And they're actually using, I mean, look, everybody's talking about crypto right now, NFTs and so forth. So they created a reward program uh, called Dude Coin, which is not a cryptocurrency. Where the way they're relating it or the way they're wording it is like kind of a, uh, like similar yeah. logic. So you get, you know, the first world, uh, what is it? The first um, dude's currency, a world currency called dude coin. And, you know, they give you steps. Like if you refer a friend, you get X amount of coins. If you, uh, if it's your birthday, you get 500 coins and eventually adds up to a lot of, you know, money off towards your next product or purchase. So when you're creating this reward program, try to be fun, relatable. So you get people to sign up and they become loyal. These are your loyalty program members. And look, this is something I think Matt still, I don't know if you actually, did you ever uh, finalize it with Sugar and no, Sugar Brand? No, I haven't finalized yet. Damn, dude, it's been it's just so many, seven months. I, so many things going can you, on. Can you at least explain what's the, maybe it will be helpful to understand what's the dilemma on your part? The dilemma is basically we have not so many products used, but we have subscriptions we then have already customers that we've taken through the Shopify like onboarding through creating accounts. So we know, and one thing we're trying to do is get all like previous purchases to basically show for points as well. So like when you use Shopify, uh, there's that limit. And then Shopify, the loyalty programs on there are actually very expensive as well. So it's pricing is holding them back, yeah. but what is something that you... I guess, and I know we're kind of digressing, but this is very important because you've been, we've been talking about this yep. and you know, for your brand, I think it's really imperative. Like it's, it works for your CBD company, but we're, just, is this something that you wish you started like before subscription? I, w- I wish when I started the company, we started it, like just have it from the get go, even if it was a basic plan, just because it would build loyalty because they definitely work like Starbucks, like subscription plan works. I'm sure dude wipes works, but like once you start getting a large brand, it's, it's not hard to introduce it. You could do it, but you have a lot of moving parts already in terms of like your flow of emails and like what you're trying to, like what you're trying to get people to join in terms of groups and things like that. And now to add like, okay, yeah, also join our loyalty program. It's just, it's, I'm not saying it's not feasible or possible, but when you have an established brand, especially in commerce and you use a lot of different moving apps and things like that, it's a little hard to then incorporate another one into the flow. So you're just talking about the migration strategy. It's just like you got to change up a lot of things, a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work, yeah. Okay, so start start doing it. I know, that's it. <laughs> that's why it's 6 p.m. to 12 p.m., midnight's here. Yeah, all right, number five, you go. Number five, attack 
the markets where your customers are. And when this is something that Dude Wipes do, does a great job of, if you go to their website, you can see their sponsors and who they work and where they're announced from. ESPN, Men's Health, sports teams, they're all over sports. Anything that has, has to do with- They like, went pretty viral, right? With the, I think they, they first sponsored, uh, were they one of the first sponsors for UFC? With UFC. Tyron, was it Tyron Ty- Woods? Tyrone Woods. Yeah, it had it on his ass. It had a huge logo on his shorts, on his ass. It was, it was hilarious. It was so good, apparently, UFC bans. Is that your phone? No, I think it's yours. No, it's yours. I don't think so. Um, sorry about that. So it was so good that UFC stopped sponsoring brands without going through them. Yep. So that's crazy. That's I how thought. good it was. Yeah. But it blew up. The, but they, they do other things as well in terms of like, there's a major league pitcher. I forget his name. Um, he basically, during an interview, he said that like he had stomach issues or he had to take a shit like <laughs> a while on the mound and dude wipes fucking sent him a bag. And he posted to social media and totally went viral yeah. because it was just a funny thing that like happens that people don't talk about. And like, but their branding in terms of they go all in on ESPN, they're big on Amazon, they're big in men's health, UFC, like anywhere where your customer is, like that's one thing that like you have to, that's what good creative marketing agencies do or marketing departments. They know where their customers are and they find a creative way to get their brand in front of the customers in a non-evasive like ad way. And that, that's the key. I mean, I love it because, again, the demographic is dudes, obviously. It's a yep. dude wipe. And I think Barstools um, mentioned their product. Barstools they, another one. I think they saw them or someone was holding a sign or they had a sign in the World Series, or one of the World Series, and they posted about it. The UFC was the first one. And I think actually the most recent uh, boxing, well, I don't know, whatever Jake Paul's boxing yep. thing is, it was Jake Paul versus Tyron Woods. Dude wipes sponsored him again. And, you know, leverages that also leverages the content, right? Repurposes on Twitter, on Instagram, creates memes around it, which is actually not even a point, but they have he a loves, great, Sean loves memes. they have a great, great meme strategy. And Matt, I mean, look, look at every brand we're talking about. I'm trying to get some of my actually clients, you know, incorporate these meme strategies and some hold back because they want to be that more Tom Ford type of brand, like, but in today's world, if you want to be like Tom Ford, you got to pay millions of dollars in PR and you're just spending big bucks for no reason when you could be leveraging the current market, which is, you know, where people have, people are talking social media, which is what yeah. people want relatable stuff. Funny works. It does. And that actually goes to my sixth point, create hilarious, relatable ads that people are talking about. So, oh, actually the better way to say it is create a relatable ads, uh, humorous ads, hilarious ads that highlight your values, your product's value proposition. So Dude Wipes, uh, I was just some of their more recent ads, some of their copy and their creative talk about Taco Tuesdays. What happens when you eat tacos? What, what do usually people talk about? Taking a dump. So you see a lot of funny ads about that. It hits people. It gets people to share about it, talk about it. Is what This is what you want. So another thing I think I saw was... Uh, what was it? But the related, like, what the biggest thing that you're doing is if you can get a customer to relate a product to an action, you've won. You've won. They're relating dude wipes to fucking going to the bathroom. So now anytime someone thinks about toilet paper going to the bathroom, they think of dude wipes. That's what all the best brands in the world do. Coca-Cola, you see a billboard. Refreshment, when you want a drink, refreshment, they want the aha moment. That's what Coca-Cola does. Like, that's what the best brands do is target Walmart, they all spent billions of dollars in terms of marketing to relate an action that people have to a brand. And that's how you become a, a billion dollar brand. Yeah, not only that, every, everyone's ever since Dollar Shave Club, which kind of like changed the advertising game. In my opinion, I mean, they were huge. They created that ad, you remember what I'm talking about? Yes. That one ad that went viral. And they actually created this very, very similar video. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was using the same agency. It's actually Probably. a similar layout like the structure, how it's like the camera's position, and then you have all different scenes. Really hilarious. Check it out on YouTube. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but you'll find it. Or just check out their YouTube, which one got over like, I believe like uh, over, over a million of views. And you could see like people are watching me today saying this this video made me buy the product. It's just, this video is just yeah. great creative. Even big brands that were like stale are doing it now. I like, I think about um the deodorant. Um, What's the red deodorant? Red Spice. Red Spice. Right. Red Spice was usually a old, 
old brand that no one used. Oh, they used that guy. What's and now name? they use the, I don't know. It's Jack guy. The Jack, yeah, the Jack dude. I don't, he was in. Call him Jack dude. Jack dude. Oh, He's white girls monsters. or something? He was in white girls. He yeah. was in the longest yard or something, I think. But they totally went, they pivoted. They Their sales were probably down. They were known as like a stale, like older men, spice like and they're like, all right, we're gonna do something new, and they went that route, that Dollar Shave Club, that Dude Wipes went, and it worked. Now they crush it. I mean, I love it. Actually, before we went, something relative, Peloton ad. Did you ever see the most recent one, the Sex in the City? No. Did they kind of switch up how they advertise now? They did, and it was um, I forgot his name. He, he's a main. He, they used dead the guy from Deadpool, the main actor. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? His agency marketed. Basically, someone I think in, at sex in Sex and the City died uh, using the Peloton. I, I'm confused about the story, but I thought actually they came out within two days later this hilarious ad, which actually kind of backfired. But I'm trying to like think is like was it a good strategy? Because no, I mean there was a, a serious um, accusation with the main guy. Which is, it's an accusation. We don't know if it's true or false. Yeah, it's, they're still going through uh, a lot. Like the main the the guy actually in the ad is accused of, I think, sexual assault or something. They've been making the news a lot with their ads. Didn't they, didn't they get, they got crushed, a little bit crushed by like the cancel media about a husband buying his wife a Peloton because like he wanted her to get in shape and then like, oh my God, how can you think your wife? Was the that- thing is, it is like sometimes, look, just like they went out with this ad and I saw everybody sharing it. Everyone loved it up until backlash. I think it was Monday morning because I think it came out Friday, uh, Friday evening. Everybody, I was reading the comments, great ads, super like genius marketing, blah, blah. And then you see the media like the backlash uh, Peloton. Backlash the media creating the backlash. Exactly. Um, and then Peloton removed it. Their stock price apparently plummeted. But at the end of the day, look, shit happens. Was it a good strategy? Was it not? We'll never really know. They know internally. Did it get enough awareness? Did it actually drive sales? Like, yes, their stock price plummeted. It's going to hurt investors in the short term. But in the long term, how did it do? We're not going to know yet. I think still, look, this is what you need to do in marketing. Sometimes you have to take that route of like exposure. You have like you're going to have to like what people may not like like or you're like, shit, this is like I know there's a lot of brands that do this. That it's touchy. Yeah, it's it's a sensitive subject, but. I, it, I feel like it works. People are not talking about it. it works. Look, sometimes because it might work with your customers and like the people that don't like are not your customer anyway. So really, who gives a fuck? And that's one that? thing I've learned always. You're not going to make everyone happy. Nope. Don't make you're going to you're going to get that backlash. But the second that you realize that, hey, look, if I'm not going to make everyone happy, let's just want even Trump was good at that. And like Trump was good at that. He knows a lot of people hated him. That's fine. And there's a lot of people that like them. That's fine. Like, that's how it works. And because it, the it, people that like you are then are your biggest customers and things like that. Yeah, you so. can't please. If you please everyone, you're, you shouldn't start a business. You should, uh, you, you won't even be a good politician. So you should bu- fucking give out ice cream, start an ice cream company because that'd be all you're good at. Yeah. So fuck being conservative. Be loud. There right? you go. That's all guys, we got. Yeah, I hope you like this episode. Guys, if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe for more weekly videos. If you're watching this or listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, uh, what else? I always say what else because I know we're on all these other platforms and I don't want to leave them out. But if you're listening to this, if you found this valuable, please leave us a five-star review. Tell us what you loved about the episode. If you know an entrepreneur or someone that's building a business or thinking about building a business, Please share them this content or one of our episodes. Again, we're at 55, so we have a lot of good stuff. And we try to twist it up a bit not to make it so like it's always the same because it's not. But the best part is sometimes it is. There is patterns. All of these brands, Matt, are at patterns. He literally just said to me, uh, Matt coming is like, yo, fuck it. I'm rebranding Sugar and Kush. Yeah. Right? Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Well, like, we want to claim that and he doesn't do it. Like, mm-hmm. But... Because we're we're seeing that look, there's a pattern here. When patterns work, like these these brands, all of them have something in common. They're funny. They're, some of them, a lot of them, are not creating something new. Some are, but not really. They're just reintroducing to a new market. Yeah. Really are. And yeah. just because of their branding strategies, it's working. So anyway, loved it. Hope you guys liked it. If oh, any questions? Tweet at m. Scopac or at Sean underscore Azari, and we will see you next week. Ciao. Bye, guys.